Let's talk a minute. Let's talk about parallel universes, time slips, doppelgangers, ghosts, and the Mandela effect. How are they happening? What are they really? Hmm. Are they real? Do they exist? Well, yes, they are. And yes, they do. So let's begin with parallel universes. Did you know that it was actually published in a scientific paper that the scientists at the South Pole have realized that we have parallel universes from doing laboratory studies at the South Pole where nuts and bolts and different things that they had going in one gravitational direction flipped, reversed, and started going the opposite direction in a different location, which proved a parallel universe exists in the area that they're studying and doing all of these secret experiments. Yeah. Parallel universes. They're very real. Did you know that if you took a gander at the north or the south pole from Google Sky, that the pole itself is actually in a geometric shape? It's not. It's not ice. Snow covered. There is a pattern there. That's blacked out. Because that's a portal to a parallel universe. Okay? The Ouroboros symbol is perfect. The primary example, really, of this parallel universe. Where one feeds directly into the other. It's the snake in the circle eating its tail. It was also one of the thir 13 zodiac signs that was considered so dangerous of a symbol they had to remove it and alter the calendar to make it a 12 month calendar. 12 zodiacs. But there were 13 to begin with. No, 13 is not an unlucky number. With Jesus plus his 12 disciples, there were 13 of them. 13 is a good number. The Big Bang Theory is also another great example of parallel universes. <sighs> okay, so I want to move on now and touch on time slips because this glitch in the matrix stuff has been coming up a lot lately, not just for me, but for a lot of people. This is like synchronistic on multiple scales. So I want to talk about time slips and examples of very real time slips. We've all set something down in a specific place and knew for sure, for sure that we left it right there and then cannot find it anywhere like it just poofed into another dimension. And then a little while later, or a couple weeks later, maybe a couple months later, maybe even a year or so later, you find that item again. Like it just magically reappeared because it'll be on some obvious surface that you should have surely seen before actually finding it. That's a time slip where dimensions bled over into each other. There are specific conditions here on our planet scientifically proven that will create those perfect conditions and make those anomalies happen. Our scientists refer to them as magnetic anomalies. There are negative magnetic anomalies and there are positive magnetic anomalies and they are all over the globe. There's small ones, there's big ones, there's collections all over the planet. Sometimes people see specific type of ghosts that are clearly dressed out of this time period. You know, like when you see a bunch of Civil War soldiers marching through the middle of your living room. 
And sometimes they even notice you back. Because they aren't, in fact, ghosts. It's a time slip between the past and the future. And while you're viewing and observing the past, and likely not even realizing it, thinking it's ghosts, they too are noticing you and seeing the future. And perhaps thinking you're some kind of apparition or ghost. Interesting, right? And it happens all the time. To every walk of life. Every type of person has experienced some type of dimensional time, sh time shift, time slip. Not the same thing as the Mandela effect. And we'll get to that in a minute. I want to talk about doppelgangers. A lot of people want to say that doppelgangers are your evil twin, right? And that everybody in the world has an evil twin. Well, why do they tell all of us that if we see somebody that looks identical to us, it's just our doppelganger and nothing more to see here, folks? Anybody ever wonder about that? Because there are more than one of you. And occasionally because of these time slips that happen, you could run into you. Just like that movie, Back to the Future. And yeah, surely some kind of change would happen because of you acknowledging each other and becoming aware that this is your future self or past self or however you want to view that in your linear mind in order to be able to wrap your mind around the many worlds theory. And I don't care either way. So, I mean, I'm no, no insult intended there at all. It's how really, however, you can just wrap your mind around it because essentially it doesn't matter how you view it as far as if it's past, present, future, or if it's just multiple timelines in a row. Either way, you, either way you slice that bread, it's still another dimension, right? It's still another dimension. And a lot of times these dimension, dimensional time slips with your doppelganger can happen because your, your thoughts have created a frequency of a vibration on a certain frequency that matches your doppelganger, your alternate self in their very same frequency. They're matching your frequency. You're matching theirs. And the next thing you know, you're bleeding over and you become aware of each other. I personally know someone who saw 18 different thems on this, like a great big screen where everybody's picture in picture, like a, like a big zoom meeting, except they've never even experienced a zoom meeting to know what that would look like. And as they tell me about this experience with their 18 different selves, I'm asking all these questions like, did they all acknowledge each other, you know, and realize this is another them? And what were they saying about it? And his reply was that, yeah, some of them uh, were quite excited and thrilled about the acknowledgement while others were freaked the hell out. and did not know what was going on and didn't want to be there, didn't want to be part of this boardroom meeting we're doing or whatever it is. You know, like hit the exit button and let me out. And the gentleman that actually experienced this says he's sitting in his living room in, you know, meditational pose. He was actually thinking, this is another question I asked him, how did he get there, right? How did, how did he get to the place of this? event happening what was he thinking what were his thoughts what was his intentions you know what was he seeing in his mind as he meditated and such and he said that he was actually actively thinking about all of the glitches in the matrix and the many worlds theory and odds of probability and all these things and so he literally just said as he's connected right he just says show me how it works i want to know and then this great big screen shows up in front of you. 
18 different hints. And he's thinking it's just in his mind's eye, you know, that he's just seeing it in his mind's eye. But he says he opens his eyes and he can still see the same screen with the 18 men that look like him. All variations, but look like him. He could, you know, enough that he could tell us him. And so he's like, this went on for hours. He felt like it went on for hours. And he actually grew tired of all of their chit chat that some of them were doing, trying to scientifically talk this out, philosophically work this out, right? To understand it. because they're all, they're all experiencing it as an aha moment. Some not so aha, but you know, you get the point. And I'm like, so, okay, how did you finally get it to turn off? And he said, honestly, I laid down and went to sleep. I'm like, what? <laughs> it's like, I, I laid down, I went to sleep to shut it off because they were all talking and I didn't know how else to shut it off and I was tired. So I just laid down and went to sleep. When I woke up, it was gone. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry. And um, so we had a very long discussion about this. Very good, long discussion about this. And I think that's exactly how it happened was that he was, he put himself on that frequency to know. And he's such a open-minded, uh, beautiful source of energy already, you know, in his level of growth and development, that this was like the next step, right? It's just showing. He's ready for it. Let's give it to him. So that was a massive, you know, a massive thing that happened there with him bleeding that over with like 19 hymns. And I don't even know how that happens. I can't explain that. <laughs> I only know about the nine. So I don't know what that is for sure, except for the whole frequency thing, right? I think that's how we get there. I think that's how we experience deja vu a lot as well. Um, or just a singular doppelganger. I think that this is how we um, can quickly time travel and come back is from that vibration being there. Even if you're just like on autopilot, walking through the house, going from point A to point B to get something, but your mind is thinking somewhere else, like literally your mind is off somewhere else. You could blip to somewhere else if you, if you're not careful, if those thoughts are strong enough, that frequency is going to go and beam you over there, Scotty. So, and I mean, it can happen, right? It can happen. And people have these strange missing time that they can't explain. And a lot of times that could likely be not just from alien abduction, but these time slips, these time traveling time slips that we don't even realize that we can do. And the only reason you don't realize it is because you're not aware enough on a daily within yourself. If you were consistently being mindful and consistently being um, present and consciously aware, then you could retain more um, of your memory of every experience. But, you know, as it stands, the less consciously present you are and consciously aware of what's up, um, the less you retain in your available short-term memory. It's more of a long, long-term memory catalog. It'll come back later and maybe in bits and pieces, fragmented. So it's always about how present you are in the moment. Okay. No driving your car on autopilot. We're not Teslas. We should, I mean, we're better than Teslas, but we shouldn't be doing all that. Right. <coughs> now, I want to talk about the Mandela effect. <coughs> I got to get a drink. Okay. 
So a lot of people don't even realize that the reason we call it the Mandela effect is because many of us remember, myself included, remember very vividly Nelson Mandela dying in prison 10 years, 20, I don't even know how long before he actually, like, actually died, right? And so we call it the Mandela effect for that reason. Because we remember that playing out on TV. I remember seeing that on TV. I remember my mother talking about it and bringing my attention to the TV. Because she was distraught. She was upset. That happened. And then flash forward like 10 years or whatever. And they're saying he's dead again. And everybody's like, what? But I remember that. And they're like, no, you don't remember nothing because that didn't happen. Yeah, just like Jiffy Peanut Butter happened, man. And Mirror Mirror on the Wall happened. And as a matter of fact, I just saw a video recently of a, a lady about my age who had a few storybooks from when she was a, a child. Original Disney stories that she found in the attic and she unpacked them and she, was, she videotaped it to show that in her book, it actually says... Mirror, mirror on the wall still. But if you look at the books now, it's changed. It's changed. Those are time slips that happened for a different reason. They happened because of perhaps doppelgangers saw each other. Or because someone consciously time traveled to a point in the past and altered something. Which then created random odds of probability in history. Sprinkled it here and there. Some were more di distinct, you know. But others are just little channels that ripple off of everything else. So they're more random. And then things like the famous passage in the Bible changes. Where the lion lays down with the lamb. Now reads, the wolf lays with the sheep. Look it up. True story. I was so blown away when I learned that one. I needed evidence. So I called five preachers in my local area. And I asked every one of them, do you know this passage? And they're like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Because, you know, preachers know their stuff. They can turn right to it. They know exactly where they are. And every one of them thought for sure they knew exactly where that was. And they flipped right to it, humored me on the phone. Flipped right to it and was astonished to discover that what I was telling them was true, which in turn astonished me because I was looking to them for confirmation that this was not true. Now, if that's not creepy enough, I just learned today on a call in show that I did with some of my friends that there are not one but three different places in the Bible that now use the word matrix. Matrix. Now let's think about this. I tell you all the time, words are a vibration. Words have power. When we spell words, we're casting them out into the universe to create. Vibrations create. So when we use our words, specific ones, repeatedly, we change things. We know we're in a matrix. We know that to get out of the matrix, you have to free your mind. You have to deprogram, debug, and learn how to use your firewall and your virus protection to not be hacked again, which is your thought. Your thought, not their thought, telling you what to think. Your thought. 
put your wall up and protect your thoughts from being manipulated. Trust your instincts. Because I personally feel like we as a collective changed those words in the Bible and added the word matrix to the Bible this many times. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and I'll admit that. And if someone knows their Bible well enough to know that that word matrix has been in the Bible all of this time, please come forward and let me know so that I can know different. I encourage you to do so. 100%. And until then, I'm going to feel like we did this because we are powerful beings. We absolutely are. I digress. So this is what we have as Mandela effect. When one thing was one way and now it's another. Because of some type of time travel that happened. Whether it was an accidental, you ran into your doppelganger because you're vibrating on the same level for a minute and your dimensions bleed over. Or if it's because someone intentionally moved their vibration to go to the location that they wanted to be their destination. Intentionally. To change something. To alter something in history. Whatever that means. Another way that you can time travel is to will yourself to a specific location. But it can't be will alone. Because as with any type of creation, you have to be able to just let it go with no doubt. Similarly to the way we let our words loose with no doubt. And that's why those spells can work. And that's why you should be careful what you say. And be careful what you wish for. True story. So if you will yourself to the place and time that you want to go, that's a possible way to time travel as well. And you can will your consciousness to that point as well. That point in time, location. Not just your physical body, but your consciousness. This is exactly the way they teach people how to remote view is with giving them uh, coordinates to will their consciousness to go to and that's exactly what they do that's actually how they know for sure that um, all people are psychic this don't want to use that word psychic they taught them how to tap into their psychic ability but they're not going to tell you that. So they'll tell you that they taught them to remote view. Because that's more technical. And it doesn't sound like you're psychic. Because psychic sounds gifted. Not technical. See how that play on words? Cast a spell. So. Moving right along. Oh yeah, I might want to mention too that this actually proves the many worlds theory to not be a theory, but accurate. And so yeah, parallel universes are real, doppelgangers are real, time slips are real, time travel is real. The Mandela effect is a residual effect of that, and sometimes so are ghosts. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And if you enjoyed this, please like this video. And if you're a subscriber of mine, I am in deep gratitude to you. I love all of you. Be well and be blessed in love and light.